On the last morning of our Dragon's Teeth Traverse, Eric, our 76-year-old hut companion, told us stories of visiting all the huts in the Richmond Range as we watched the sunrise over Mount Fishtail. We visited my friend Peter's new home, where he popped on a slideshow of his Richmond Alpine Traverse. And after some beer and chips, we flew home over the island peaks in the range. We set a date and started planning. The Tiararoa route looked like it spent lots of time in the valleys. And there were some good looking loops onto the tops. Then I found something very exciting. A route that followed the main ridge of the Western Range, all the way from Mount Riley near Blenheim to the Red Hills above St Arnott. Madpom had posted an article on Tramper with the route details. It's a big route with heaps of off-track travel. The article gave a range of 45 to 76 hours of travel and suggested it was a seven day plus trip. I was told by a friend about a wilderness article where Joe had completed the route over 13 days with a food drop. We'd booked a four day weekend and planned to travel as light as possible and see if we could complete the route. You know you've taken on a good adventure when you've got butterflies in your tummy. A rock had bashed my leg on Ruapehu, tramping with the kids. The bruising was pretty deep and it was hurting to walk. I visited the physio and his professional advice was not to go. His personal advice was it should be okay. If we could get close to 45 hours of travel, we could make it work for four days. The plan was Mount Riley through to Mount Fishtail Hut should take about 12 hours. From there, the next section through to Old Man Hut. Hopefully we could do that in 14 hours. Then through to Red Hills would hopefully take 10 hours and then out through to the finish on the final day. My friend Marta will tell you my plans are often over ambitious. After nine hours of travel on day one, heading into the darkness, it was clear it was going to take longer than 12 hours to get to Fishtail. I gently floated the idea of using our camping gear and stopping before the hut. Marta wasn't biting. I gave myself a little pep talk and kept walking. The forestry roads were closed due to storm damage. I asked two of the farmers for access. Luckily one said yes. My father-in-law drove us up the rough farm track and the cows were very excited to yeah, have some company. Following you, Marta. My sore leg came right after climbing Mount Riley. After three and a half hours, we turned off the track to follow the ridge west. We were greeted with an outward bound sign and trail markers for the first section to Foster's Hut and then on to Mount Royal. There's a well travelled ridge line towards Mount Fishtail. We arrived at the hut at 1.30 in the morning, exhausted after 16 hours of travel. This route was going to test us. My friends, Marta and Paul, are adventure racers, so yep. they have a unique approach to trips. They're happy to walk for hours in the dark and have short sleep breaks. We agreed to a four hour sleep. Now Marta is the fastest person to get ready to leave a hut transition in her world. I feel the pressure from the time we wake to keep up. This was a slow morning. I'll have to do better tomorrow. Our weather timing for this trip was first class. 
a huge high was going to sit on top of the range for our trip. It was warm, still and perfectly clear. We could see the Kakura Range, Nelson Lakes, Kaharangi and everything in between. It was amazing. We climbed over Mount Richmond on Saturday night and were treated to one of the best mountain sunsets I've seen. The feeling of being on the tops, miles from anywhere, watching the sun setting, knowing you have days to travel, is hard to beat. Our planned seven hours to get to Richmond Saddle had taken 11. It was dark and we stopped and rested. Clearly we were not going to be able to complete the route in four days. The map showed a shorter route, exiting the range before Red Hills. If we went over Mount Rintol, it would still be a big push, so we set the alarm for 4am. This next section is the hardest of the range due to the thick scrub and, and a steep slippery descent on a loose gravel chute. I didn't sleep much with that to look forward to. The sun rose and exposed the next section of the winding ridge line. The first few hours were good travel and then we hit the wall of scrub. After hours of scrub I was battered and sore, flinching each time I headed back into another section. We could see Ada flat in the distance. Slowly we inched along the ridge. The route finding was tough and we had a number of challenging bits where we had to be very careful. It was energy sapping. Now there's a little exposure at the bottom of that. After arriving at Ada Flat, we found a small water puddle and enjoyed the novelty of walking on a marked track. We arrived at Rintol Hut in the dark and debated if we needed to get to Tarn Hut to get out in time to catch the plane. Three long days were catching up on us. We were tired and sore. We shared the hut with Josh, who was finishing up his Tiaroa walk. I had a better transition on our last morning, and we headed off in the dark again, needing to travel fast for the next going 10 on. hours. We visited the beautiful Tarn and, at Tarn Hut and made good time down to the river. My feet have been dry since the start. It felt so good to sit in the river and soothe my sore body. With the advice from the local dock ranger, we crossed the, the Waio River and picked up. And we picked up at the power station. We hadn't completed our full route, but we'd had a great adventure. <laughs>